So, any ideas? How do we actually bring air into the lungs? With our muscles of inspiration. <laughs> the internal costals, some they're called. You have the intercostal muscles, but mainly, mainly it's your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is your main respiratory muscle. Um, those other muscles we call the accessory muscles, and typically you don't use those unless you're having a hard time breathing. Um, if you're using your, you know, those accessory muscles, the sternocleidomastoid, I mean, you use them to some degree, but for the most part, it's just filling up. But if you're using all these called retractions and you're seeing all these extra muscles working, um, you're having a hard time breathing. So, but yeah, so normally the diaphragm. <coughs> so, how does the diaphragm cause you to breathe? I mean, it's clear down here. You showed us this thing in lab where it was like a <laughs> dome and there were two balloons inside. Oh, Good, I'm glad you saw that. Out. I'm glad you saw that. So does the diaphragm pull down? Yeah. And then our lungs get to inflate and then when it, we breathe out, the diaphragm goes out. Is that what out. I was referencing? Yeah. That's, like that thing. That's exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. So um, we don't, basically what we're doing is that diaphragm drops. And so as it drops, it creates a negative pressure. That makes sense? It's dropping, but something's got to, you know, it's trying to make that space in there bigger, but something's got to fill that space. And there's only one entrance into that whole cavity, right? So if we drop our diaphragm, the only way the air can come in, the only way it can fill that space is by sucking and drawing air in through the, you know, into the trachea through the lungs. So it's all based on a negative pressure system. The diaphragm drops, we have that empty space now, we have to fill it. And so our lungs expand to fill that space. So when air goes out, is it just the opposite? Is it positive pressure? Um, so air coming in is, bas is kind of more of an active process where we're contracting the diaphragm and, and sucking that air in almost kind of forcefully. Ex exhaling is more of a passive process. We just relax that diaphragm and the air just kind of nat naturally goes out. Um, so we're not really forcing the air out. It kind of just goes out on its own. We're forcing it to come in by dropping the diaphragm. And then when we just relax, it all just kind of goes back to normal and it comes out. So the diaphragm relaxes and that causes relaxes the diaphragm. Okay. Yeah. So when we say, how is it expired? It's really just as simple as the diaphragm relaxing and the air leaves. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you can have a forceful exhalation, right? I mean, you can force yourself to breathe hard on the way out. But for the most part, we take a breath in. That's an active thing and then it just kind of passively comes out. So how, like I know it was in here, but how is coughing, like is it just more pressure on the, or it's relaxing more? So coughing is, is gonna be more of a, um, a spasm type thing. We have that very forceful, and we can, you know, and we can force air out with our diaphragm a little bit too. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, singers, like really good singers, have that whole diaphragm thing mastered. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's all about controlling your diaphragm, basically. Um, now I'm thinking, as every, t every breath I take, I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, so yeah, so coughing is kind of like that spasm of those muscles and also kind of, and somewhat of the, of, of the airways, too, to kind of forcefully get that stuff out. So number seven said list and describe the functions of the three cell types found in the alveoli. I don't even, I could only find two and I don't even know if they're right. I only got that from the slides. Yeah, oh, really? I found, found it in the anywhere. book and then I confirmed it. Because I found the type one pneumocytes and type two pneumocytes and I just, I didn't think to look at the slides. And then there's the macro. Macrophage. Yes. Mm -hmm. That it talks yeah. out before it was. It, do, it doesn't. It doesn't. It mentions them, but it doesn't basically say. It doesn't go. This is the third. Yeah, you know? yeah. it didn't say. It, that it really small. doesn't. No, yeah. and that and that's so. Sometimes that's that's a perfect example of a question he asks. It's not necessarily in the book. Yeah. Um, so what should I say about macrophages in relation to the respiratory system? Um, so I mean, what would they do? What are they there for? They eat <laughs> bacteria. Or yeah. Yeah, so their job is that any, any pathogen that comes in, um, bacteria, whatever, and, you know, they're there to destroy it before it 
gets into the system too much. So are they just only within like the diaphragm? And the they're they're inside the alveoli. Where's that? So so the way our lungs work, we breathe in through our trachea, right? <laughs> Goes in through the the bronchi, the main big bronchi branches, and then those it keeps branching smaller and smaller and smaller in the bronchioles, and then we get to essentially our alveoli. So, picture time. So this is. For me, it's figure 23-7, bronchioles and alveoli, but the idea here, we're breathing that air in and it, it, you know, it eventually branches down until these very small sacs. The alveoli is where that oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange actually happens. There's none of that going on up here. It's only in the alveoli. I mean, there's a few little alveoli, but you know, up here, up in these, the main airways, there's no oxygen, there's no gas exchange taking place there. Down here in the actual alveoli, there is. And so basically, what do type 1 pneumocytes do? Yeah, so they're just those epithelial cells that make the alveoli, right? Type 2, what do those do? They produce the Good, so, so what? What is surfactant? I mean, why do we need to worry about that surface tension? Like a kind of. Yeah. So these, well, these alveoli, they're mm -hmm. tiny. I mean, they're extremely small, right? And we know that water is attracted to itself. It likes to stick together. We have that surface tension. That's why you know a leaf will float on water instead of just sink, kind of thing. So water is attracted to itself, and these alveoli are so small that, so if we go over to the next page, figure 23-8, um, the, the water on, that's lining this alveolus is, is going to be attracted to each itself. And so that alveoli without surfactant would just collapse because the water is going to be trying, you know, kind of like a magnetic force trying to attract that water together. So the surfactant decreases that surface tension. Kind of like, have you ever done that, I don't know, like in elementary or middle school, you put a paper clip on a, in a bowl of water and it floats? But then you put like a drop of dish soap in there and the paper clip sinks? Mm -hmm. So surfactant is like that dish soap that reduces that surface tension. Wait, so why does it want to do that? So that other, without reducing that surface tension, otherwise the water is going to be attracted and this alveolus is going to collapse. Those, the sides are going to want to stick together basically. Okay. So with surfactant, we reduce that tension so it stays open. A newborn babies sometimes have trouble with that because they're not yet producing enough surfactant. Yeah, um, I remember now there was like a question on our lab. Do you guys remember that? It was like on a worksheet. Like one of the first ones. Yeah, yeah premature especially because they just haven't developed that surfactant yet. So. so the alveolar macrophages only eat within the alveoli. Yeah, they're just hanging out in the alveoli. So, so like we said, pathogens, but not only that, um, uh, you know, any, like dust, little dust particles, you know, whatever gets in there that's, that's not natural, that's not supposed to be there, the macrophages take care of it. So in a smoker, they're going to be working like crazy trying to keep up. They're not going to win, but they're going to try. <laughs> 